All right, so welcome to what's today? Um, Tuesday, June 29th, 2021. All right, so we're going to have a pretty good lesson today. And uh, there is, I noticed that there is a handout there. So I'm, uh, we're going to use a little bit of that handout, but a lot of information they're going to uh, give you on the glass board that's right in front of me. All right. And uh, also, we're going to use some images from the from the laptop here. So, anyway, so uh, let's just uh, get started. We're going to get with. I'm going to walk you into some background information, and based on that, uh, we're going to we are going to use that as building blocks for the information uh, for the information I'm going to give you, and hopefully uh, that combined with the labs. Um, we're going to be able to maybe turn this information into knowledge. Do we know what the difference is between information and knowledge? Uh, I'll just give you a quick uh, rundown. The information would be just like you're getting a, a recipe of how, how to make, how to bake bread and you get that recipe and try to make bread out of it. That's the information that you got. Now, I guarantee you that if you try to apply that, and try to bake bread, whatever going to come out of the oven, it's not going to be bread. It's going to be some sort of a brick or something, whatever. Now you're going to go trial and error and experiment and uh, learn based on your experiences. And finally, you're going to be able to get the product that you want. Uh, so then you can say you have the knowledge. Okay, so information versus knowledge. Uh, so, uh, all right. So first building block we are going to look at the diode, all right? Um, now, I assume when, uh, uh, when we are doing this uh, class, I am going to assume that we have, uh, everybody knows nothing about what I'm talking about, and that's the way I'm going to uh, present this thing to you. Now, we're going to have some, um, uh, some of us uh, did have some experience, previous experience, whether in high school or some whatever hobbies. Uh, so that's fine. Um, uh, some of us, uh, this class is tailored for people to be completely green, uh, walk off the street, sort of, so to speak. And uh, and that's how I'm going to try to give you this uh, this uh, this lesson here. All right. So uh, today's uh, topic is uh, is age bridge. Okay, age bridge. All right. Now, before we get into that, we're going to uh, we're going to get into some background thing. Uh, all right. The operation of a diode. All right. How does diode work? And you might want, you might wonder why is he talking about diodes? Well, it's because some of that knowledge is going to be used in what we're talking about. All right, so a diode, a diode is, a diode consists of something uh, like um, uh, P and N material, okay. So on one side, we have a P type of uh, material, and on the other side, we have an N type of a material. What's an N type of a material? N type of a material consists, and we're not going to go into the detail because I could make a whole lesson about just the diode, but I just want to get to get you, you to get the basic operation of the equipment that we're going to use. So an N type material has a lot of negative charges, a lot. That's basically dominant charges in that are negative. In the P uh, type material, there are a lot of positively charged elements there. So charges, there are positive charges, okay? And then we're going to bring out a lead from here, and we're going to bring out a lead from here. Okay? What is going to happen is that if you apply power to it, a voltage, uh, that thing in my not, my conduct or my not conduct, okay? A resistor, if you just get a regular resistor or a wire uh, resistor, uh, you can apply voltage one way, and the current is going to flow, you can apply the voltage the other way, and this current is going to flow, and the resistor is going to provide some resistance to the current pathway, or the current path, okay? Now, uh, when we get to the P-type materials and N-type materials, uh, then uh, this, uh, this piece that we have is going to 
conduct one way, but it's going to block the electricity the other way. All right, so let's see what's going to happen inside, just as a review. Now, the opposites attract, so the negative charges are going to be attracted to the positive charges, and uh, the positive charges are going to be attracted to the negative charges. So here's the interface, and interface is basically the line here, that's where those two meet. Okay, so some of the negative charges are going to accumulate here, try to get into that, and some of the positive charges are going to accumulate right here. It's going to, they are going to spill over because they are going to try to get in there, but they won't have enough energy to get fully there, right? So uh, over here, what we're going to create is what is going to create by itself is going to be something that's called depletion depletion layer. Depletion region. All right. Now, because charges have some energy and the energy that we're going to measure as voltage. Uh, so we're going to create some sort of a voltage here because on one side we have some uh, uh, negative charges, on the other side we have positive charges. So this is the negative region. The negatives are gonna spill a little bit over. It's just kind of, you know, the, the, the P material is going to get wet with the N, with the ends, and the N is going to get a little bit wet with the P's, okay? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you can just, uh, uh, you know, use that kind of analogy, right? So the voltage is what's going to happen. It's going to depend on the material. So usually uh, you're going to use a silicon diode for silicon. Silicon diode, you're going to have that as 0 0.7 volts, okay? That is going to be 0 0.7 volts. And of course, the positive is going to be here. Negative is going to be here. So it's just the reverse of the materials here, all right? Uh, so what's going to happen if we apply uh, uh, voltage this way here and that way here, uh, this, this piece, this whole block or this whole brick of things, is going to start trying to conduct. However, we're going to have to overcome that depletion uh, region. Uh, so whatever the voltage is going to be flowing through that is going to be reduced by that amount. So it's going to be whatever the voltage applied uh, minus that 0 0.7 because it works the other way. So it opposes, okay? So, and that is going to stay. Now, silicon diodes uh, you have um, usually 0 0.7 volts, anywhere from 0 0.6 to close to 0 0.8. You know, it depends on when this thing was made and how this thing was fused together. So, uh, but uh, for the sake of uh, for, for for the sake of this lesson here, it's just going, usually it's assumed to be 0 0.7 as an as an average. Okay. Now, germanium diodes. Uh, are going to have 0 0.3 volts, okay, of a depletion region. Okay. Uh, now, also, what you're going to see, because this is a diode, just a general purpose diode, and uh, what's going to happen is that silicon diode is going to have 0 0.7 volts of the barrier here, and germ, uh, germanium is going to have, on the average, 0 0.3 volts. Then you're going to deal with something that's called light emitting diodes. And different type of materials are being fused together. So the interface is going to produce, is going to produce photons. It's going to shoot photons in, uh, with different frequencies. And those, uh, uh, those forward bias uh, voltages are going to have to uh, be accomplished in a different way. So uh, uh, I think red LEDs around two volts, uh, then yellow is close to that, greens, blues are you know, a little bit more. So the, you, can, you can Google the, uh, the uh, forward bias voltage on the diodes, on LEDs, and you're going to have a table on how to uh, how to uh, predict what is going to uh, what's going to be now the simple the symbol for the diode is like this here yeah. a little triangle with a little bar here and there are leads coming through all right now this is the positive side of the diode this is the negative side of the diode 
If you apply voltage this way, the diode is going to conduct and is going to apply a little bit of, um, I don't want to use the word resistance, but a little bit of opposition because the, that depletion region is going to create 0 0.7 volts the other way. So it's going to be reduced by that. It's going, but it, the current is going to flow. If you apply, if you reverse the polarity on that, then the diode is going to not conduct. It's going to act as an open circuit. So this, if you forward bias the diode, it's going to ask as a closed switch. If you reverse bias the diode, it's going to all, uh, act like an open switch. Of course, <clears throat> if you apply enough voltage uh, in the reverse, finally the diode is going to give up and it's going to break down. So that's why every diode has something that's called a breakdown voltage. So it's going to resist, 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 but if the pressure is enough, it's going to say, I can't handle that anymore. It's going to start conducting, okay? But that's usually when that happens, diode usually gets damaged, right? Now, uh, the terminal names for that, uh, one of them is anode and the other one is cathode, right? So now I'm just going to go back to the proper labeling of the terminals here. So this usually indicates if you polarize the diode this way, you're going to have uh, something that's going to conduct and pass the current through, all right? Um, now, what's the easiest way to remember which one is anode, which one is uh, cathode, okay? Um, any guesses? Um, you can go on voice or, uh, uh, or, uh, uh, or some, some of my, all right? One, one side is shorter, one side is longer. That's on the. Uh, that's when you have the LED, which looks like, uh, which looks like this. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, something like. Um, it's got a something like that. So now, and it's got leads here, all right. So some of them, but if you cut the leads off, how do you know which is which? All right. Well, what happens is that one of the sides, if there's a bit of a rim here, is going to have a flat side, okay? Um, and that is going to be the negative part, all right? But what we're trying to do is we're going to try to um, uh, uh, name uh, the terminals. So which one would be anode and which one would be cathode? Uh, as far as a general purpose diode, would it be LED or just a rectifier diode or, or signal diode? Uh, which is positive, which is negative, which one is the cathode, which one is the anode. Right. The easiest way to remember is um, by the school grading. Right. What's the best positive mark that you can get? It's A, a, it's a or A+. Plus. Right. A starts with, anode starts with A, A+, plus. anode is the positive. All right, and the other one is the cathode, which is the negative. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the last thing that I'm going to uh, to say is that remember, if it's a silicon diode, it's going to have 0 0.7 volts, and it's going to demonstrate itself as this type of a polarity. Okay. So normally you're going to apply the positive positive bias to the, you're going to bias this thing uh, positively. Uh, so you're going to have current flow through and that, that depletion region here is going to give you about minus 0.7 volts. If it's a silicon diode, if it's a German, germanium diode, German diode, germanium diode, uh, it's going to be 0 0.3 and anything else, uh, depending on the color because different materials are being used to produce different colors for the light emitting diodes. Uh, so um, uh, then uh, the, the different materials fused together produce a different voltage at the depletion region here, okay? Uh, so the, uh, by this, uh, uh, by saying this here, if you have a circuit, uh, let's say here's a battery, okay, uh, DC source, so here's plus, here's minus, the shorter side is minus, the longer side is plus, and if you have a circuit going that way, and if you apply the diode, just like that, and if you have a switch here, if you close the switch, 
what is going to happen? Well, uh, the diode is going to conduct for a little bit because here's a plus, here's the anode here. So that's going to be plus, positive side, negative side of the, battery, of the diode. The diode is going to conduct for a little bit, but because it's going to have very little resistance to the current, uh, the current is going to be too much. Too much current is going to pass through the diode and the diode is going to go poof, right? It's going to get damaged. So that's why we're going to apply uh, something that is called a current limiting resistor. Okay, so here's a resistor, here's the diode, okay? And, um, uh, and we are, now everybody is happy because the current is going to be limit, the, the resistor is going to be limiting the current flowing into a, some sort of like a safe amount of current that the diode can actually handle. So always we need to have that. If you just apply straight to the terminals, all right? Not going to have much of that thing. So same thing with the LEDs. You know, it works pretty much uh, that way, right? Um, quite often, the diodes, uh, general purpose diodes, are being used as a safety features. So sometimes you're going to see in some circuitry, you're going to have a circuit, and right at the power of the circuit, you're going to have a diode in reverse. It's a DC power supply, like a jack. And you're going to see right on the, that there's going to be a diode, but it's going to be connected in reverse. So the uh, so the anode is going to be connected to the negative side, and the cathode is going to be connected to the positive side. And I wonder why is that thing? This thing serves no purpose. Well, uh, quite often it, the, the the only purpose of that is that sometimes if somebody by mistake uh, plugs in the power the wrong way, then the rest of the circuit can be can be damaged but what's going to happen the diode is going to kick in the diode is going to get damaged but you're talking about maybe a 50 cents part or something uh, and then you're going to uh, save the rest of the circuitry if it's an expensive equipment or something like that right so that sometimes you're going to see that also sometimes uh, diodes as uh, they can be used as rectifiers and uh, um, but that's a separate uh, lesson uh, separate topic uh, you can actually use the diode as a capacitor, right? A small, <clears throat> excuse me, small amount capacitor. Basically, the same thing. You you, you bias the diode differently. Uh, I mean, differently in the reverse. That depletion region expands. Right? It gets wider when you apply uh, the, um, uh, and then that creates uh, basically like a capacitor-looking device, right? So that it's a, it's a kind of like a trick sometimes. It's 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 a common use in some. Uh, precision electronics. Okay? Uh, so what's going to happen is that if we apply 10 volts, this thing is beginning to 10 volts here. We're going to have 0 0.7 volts always. That is thing not going to, this 0 0.7 volts, that is going to change, not going to change. 0 0.7 volts is going to be here which means the rest of the voltage is going to be uh, dissipated across the resistor, which is going to be 9.3 volts. That's how you can, you can almost, you can always tell that, all right? Now what happens is, is what, you, what happens if you are going to increase the voltage here to, uh, to like say 20 volts, all right? 20 volts, then that also is going to stay. That doesn't change, it stays. As long as the diode conducts, that is going to be 0 0.7 volts. So that means the rest of the voltage has to be, because this plus that has to add to that. I mean, it's just, there's no, so what's going to be? So it's going to be 19.3 volts, okay? So that's how the diodes work, all right? So that's a quick thing about diodes, all right? We're still going to get into something that's called the age bridge here. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, when you say sometimes diodes are put in reverse, uh, will they be working kind of like a fuse? In other words, you say it burns out to protect the rest of the circuit? Uh, you can sort of use that analogy of a fuse. I would more... I would prefer the word a protective device, okay? Fuse oh. is also a protective device, but what happens, you put the fuse in series with the circuit. So you pass the, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a device that, a component that actively participates in the circuit. 
Uh, if it gets too much, the fuse just basically the, the, the element just melts, right? Now that thing here is just sitting there. Yeah. Uh, if nothing happens, everything is correct. It's not kicking in. It's going to only kick in if you reverse it. I'm just going to take the hit. It's going to sacrifice itself. And uh, um, uh, you can just have you know, repair it yourself or whoever else is going to uh, take it to the repair shop. And it's going to cost you whatever the labor plus replacing a 50 cents uh, a component instead of buying whole new equipment. Yeah. So, uh, okay. all right, cool. No problem. Uh, so now... Uh, what else we're going to do? I just uh, oh yeah, well one more thing. When it comes to diodes, uh, what does it look like? It looks almost like a resistor. It's just like it looks like that. If you have like a three D version of it, and there are the leads, okay. And what you're going to notice is that. Uh, on one side, you're going to have like a white or a silver type of a stripe there, just painted on that. So that indicates the negative part, which is the cathode, and that indicates the positive right, when, you have a, when you have a diode. So we know the symbol of the diode, and we know more or less what it looks like. You still have the information only. Okay, but at least you know something now. Huh? Okay, just go on here. Now, what is going to happen if we uh, if we do something like this? Um, we're going to have N material. We're going to have P material, and then we're going to add another N material here. So we have two interfaces, two N, two P N junctions. Excuse me. And uh, well, what's going to happen if we apply the voltage here? Let's say plus, and that is going, we're going to take that to the ground. Is this thing going to conduct? It will not conduct unless there's always, but, right? So unless you provide such a huge amount of voltage uh, that this thing is just going to get damaged and it's just going to give up, right? But uh, under a normal operation, normal circumstances, this thing is not going to conduct. But now look at this. This is just like having two diodes, right? Yeah. See that? Well, oh, I don't see it, but I will have to put my hand behind the glass there. <laughs> so um, this is just like two PN junctions here. What is going to happen if we apply a tiny bit of uh, voltage, which is going to cause... Uh, we can just get another lead here. So here's a lead, here's a lead, and here is a lead, okay? Uh, now, if we apply a little bit of a voltage here, okay, which is going to cause the current to flow, we're going to make the current flow that way to the ground, then that current is going to encourage that current to flow. So we're going to have just a, a little tiny bit of current just to trigger things. And this can cause a huge like Niagara Falls kind of you know, to flow. So this way, by, by controlling a small current passing through this junction only, you're encouraging that. So now this is called a transistor. Right? That's how transistor operates more, like, more, more or less. And this way, we would, uh, um, we would use this setup. It's a very simplified version of that as a switch, okay? Because um, if you open the switch here, if you don't apply the voltage to the uh, base here, so here's the base, all right? Here's a collector. And here's a meter. Lead for the transistor, and how we, that's how we can use a transistor as a switch. So if this here, this pathway is broken, there is no voltage applied to the. Oh, wait a second. Let me just do it a little bit better. I can do a better job. You can do it.
Yeah, we're going to get a little bit of a battery here. That goes also to ground, so those grounds are to the same potential. And we're going to have a wire and a switch that goes to the base. All right. So when the switch is open, there is no current flowing through, uh, through this junction here, this base emitter junction. That means the, 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 it's just like this huge switch uh, is uh, it's just like having open switch. Right. Now, uh, when we close this switch here, we're going to encourage a bit of a current flowing from here to there. And that is just like closing the switch, the big switch here. So this way you can use a very small amounts of current to control the flow of a bigger amounts of current. Right. So uh, this here is a collector, as I said, with a, it's represented by the letter C. There's a base with the reference of the letter B, and here is emitter that is uh, represented by the letter E. Okay. Now there are different um, um, different cases uh, that the transistors are are, are being uh, enclosed in. So the the transistor components look uh, a lot; they could vary uh, as far as you know the power or the purpose of them. Okay, so, but the basic operation is that, so that you can use the transistor as a switch. Now, if you dress it up with other components, uh, then you can use this thing as an amplifier, all right? So you can have a little bit of amount of current that's going to go uh, uh, cause a lot of more, the bigger current to flow more. Then you can, when you lower the current, it's going to lower the big current. So basically by controlling the small current here, you can control the big current here. Okay, so that's all, but it can also be used as a switch, right? So you turn this thing on, this thing turns on, turn this thing off, this thing turns off, right? Now, if you have a oh, lot- sorry. Sorry, would that be kind of like a relay then? Uh, yeah, in an aspect yeah. of that, you're indirectly controlling the switch. Yes, you can. Uh, that's yeah, very good analogy, right? Because uh, the the relay is it's more like electro. It uses electromagnets, and this one here is more like electronics here. Now, yeah, relay, it's a physical yeah. device versus electronic, but it's still indirectly switching. Yeah, a load. So what happens? Uh, what with the relay, you can just only go on and off. Right, but with a transistor, you can control amount. So if you put a microphone here, and you connect a big speaker here, you can just control that uh, to, with your voice. Uh, you can make that thing to go through the speaker and be very loud. Right, you cannot do that with uh, a relay. Okay, right? okay, yeah. I see what you're saying. <laughs> okay, but you can also use that as a switch. You can go close it and bias it in such a way that you get a full current going. So that's just you know, switch is closed. Now it's not really a true representation of a switch because you have a little bit of voltage losses here, but they're so insignificant that sometimes you can just consider it as a closed switch. Okay. Now, um, if you have, look at the symbol of a transistor is like this. Yeah. Okay. This is a meter. This is collector. This is base. And this would be NPN transistor. Right? Now, if Hello, you sir. have, sorry. Um, sorry to interrupt you. Can I ask one question? Sure. Uh, sir, the current which is being supplied to the base, so that can be of any value, like uh, any value, or there should be a minimum voltage that needs to be applied so that the current will be flowing. Yeah, interest. like for example, uh, what we want to accomplish is that see, there's a PN junction. Usually, those transistors are silicon. That uh, that tells us right away that we have to overcome that 0 0.7 volts, right? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, yeah, but there's the, the, I'm just giving you the basics. Uh, now, if you really want to go into transistors and stuff, uh, you can study them for a whole year or maybe 10 years and still not know everything about them, okay? So, yeah, but the basics here, I'm just giving you, because I'm leading you into something that's called age bridge that we're going to do. Uh, so I'm just uh, explaining to you how the different uh, components that we're going to employ in that age bridge uh, controller, right? How they work. 
Now, so this is the NPN because it's NPN. You can use also PNP and we'll have to bias a little bit different, but uh, um, uh, this would be uh, something like that, all right? So this would be uh, a meter basin collector. So this just reverse uh, the, um, the, the, the leads here, okay? But we're going to deal with the NPN right now. Okay, now, so we got that out of the way. Do we have the, oh, now when you have, because you're going to, uh, you see that uh, terminology a lot. Like for example, um, when you have a transistor, and it's dressed up with the resistors and so on. And uh, it's part of the circuit. So that is going to be voltage applied to the collector. Right? But if you have a lot of transistors in the circuit, then you're going to have the voltage applied to all the circuitry and all the transistors. So that's why we call it VCC. We cannot just say if you have five, we're just gonna go, we're not gonna say VCC, C, 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 right? I just wish for the VCC, that means it's the voltage, that's the supply voltage. And you see that a lot in your uh, schematics uh, that we have. So that's where the CC comes from. Okay? That applies, that's being applied to all the collectors, all the, all the circuitry implying all the transistors. Now you, you will be able to watch this. I'm going to put this thing on YouTube. So you'll be able to rewatch the whole thing as you go along and you can even speed it up. So you can have, you can see it with the speed that's twice as much. Make me sound funny. All right, so we got this thing ready here, we do. All right, so we have the, um, yeah, now, uh, when we have the logic gates that we're applying, let's say this is, a, no, let's just do the inverter for the sake of argument here. It's a logic gate. Inverts. If you have zero here, you're going to have one here. If you have one here, you're going to have zero here. When we want to apply the logic into that. What are we going to do? Remember this scenario here? Um, uh, here's going to be a resistor and that's going to be connected to the ground. And over here, we're going to have, no, we're going to have a switch. Yeah. And that is going to go the VCC, whichever that is. And usually in our case, when we use TTL systems, the VCC is five volts. Why do we call it VCC? Because the 74 series of components, they are called the TTL, TTL components. Uh, that means transistor, transistor logic. Why is it called transistor, transistor logic? Is because those chips, those ICs, those integrated circuits, they have a lot of transistors inside them. They're based on employing transistors inside. So that's why it's called transistor and transistor logic, okay, TTL. Right. Now, what happens is that uh, if you have a, a resistor, if the switch is open, of course, that is going, this logic input is going to be put to ground. So the logic level is going to be zero naturally, right? Now, when we have, uh, when we pull this thing, when we close the switch, we're going to have a current flow and that is going to be pulled up high because resistor is going to provide resistance. It's going to have a voltage drop enough, but guarantee you this is going to be VCC simply because uh, there is a direct path to VCC. So that's if this is five volts, we're going to have five volts and five volts is a logic one. So it's going to be zero. Right. Right now, Let's just expand that circuit a little bit further. What is going to happen if we, ah, just for the sake of it, if we connect the transistor here, and there's a base. Right. If we 
do not turn this thing on if it's off here's a power supply if this switch is off it's open switch then this is an open circuit it's just like having an open switch here then that means it's going to have a logic zero and here's going to be logic one right. now when we close the switch here then the current is going to flow through that and that is going to create a voltage drop across this resistor which means it's going to get you know, if it's enough voltage there if it falls within the specifications of that we're going to have this thing as one and that's going to be zero so see you can uh, uh, uh you can control things one way or the other right using a transistor as a switch All right, so, so far, how are we doing? We're going to have a few minutes longer lesson, if you don't mind, but I'm trying to get you as much as, as possible on the background, so you know what I'm talking about here. Or if you have something else to do after this hour is over, you can leave and you can come back to it and watch it, watch the rest of that on YouTube. Yeah? What do we have uh, now? All right, we're gonna start talking about the H uh, bridge right now. I'm gonna draw that letter H. Yeah. Cool, eh? That looks like, that's it. You can go home now, right? All right. If we put if we put a electric DC motor in here, this is the terminals, and here is a motor. Cool. And if we put switches here, now we're talking about something here, and you connect that to the positive. Uh, power supply so we're going to have the uh, V supplied and this one is going to be connected to ground I just don't want to use VCC for that one mm -hmm. this is the supplied voltage now um, let's say uh, this is the positive side and the negative side of the motor that's how they are labeled and if the power supplied that way is to the motor the motor is going to go clockwise this is the way this one is wired by way. Right? So what's going to happen? What can we have? Um, uh, what kind of possibilities to, these do we have? All right. Well, we need to uh, we need to create a pathway between positive and the ground, and the pathway has to go through the motor to make the motor run. So what if we close this switch here? And if we close this switch here, how is the current going to flow? Well. The current is going to try to find its way to the ground and it's going to see okay there is a pathway i can see it uh, so it's going to go from here the plus it's going to continue through that it's not going to go here because the switch is open so here but hey look at that there's a pathway it's going to go here and it's going to go through that one it's going to go so this positive is applied to the positive and negative is applied to the negative that means the motor is going to turn clockwise okay now, if uh, we open the circuits again and we apply, we close the other switches, we close this one and that one, then look what's going to happen. The positive is still positive here, but this one is open. This one is closed. Oh, we're going to have positive applied to the negative part of the motor, and which means that this positive side, labeled side of the motor is going to become negative because that's the ground. So the motor is going to go counterclockwise. All right. So now with the conditions that we have are clockwise, now we got counterclockwise. Right. Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, what happens? if we tied 
if we close these two switches, all right, and these two are open. Now, both terminals are tied high. If both terminals are tied high, that is going to create a brake stop. That's going to make the home motor stop, all right? So there's a brake stop. Brake stop, BS. <laughs> now, so that's one condition. Now, what if we close it the other way? Both terminals are tied to the negative. That also is going to give us the um, um, the uh, uh, brake stop because both terminals are tied to one or the other. And this is the both terminals are low. That's going to make the motor stop. All right. Now, if we have all of the switches open, we're going to have a condition that's called freewheeling, which means basically it's just hanging in the air. Kind of thing freewheeling you can just spin that thing it's going to spin freely and it's going to stop and it's on and it's on friction here right now uh so um freewheeling so here's the conditions that we have now that's as far as the motor operation okay uh is concerned um now there's another condition that is really unwanted okay um and this is something that we don't want to accomplish. If we close this switch and that switch, what is going to happen? We're going to have the positive terminal connected directly to ground. <laughs> what happens when you do that? Poof, all right? Something's gonna give here. The motor is not going to even see, and that's going to be the shoot through. And what's the, uh, what do we have here? ST for the shoot through, all right? ST for the shoot through all right so uh this is freewheeling brake stop counterclockwise and clockwise so we have accomplished the conditions but now with the technology that is developed, of course we don't want uh these also to be uh, uh to be closed right because same direct pathway to the ground from the positive with zero resistance poof things go all right so uh, that is um, that is basically the idea of age bridge. Now, of course, we humans want. Uh, you know, what's the biggest thing about us humans is that we are such animals, such beasts living on this planet that we strive to accomplish comfort in any way we can. That's why we progress, because we try to accomplish comfort. We're not going to have that. So Somebody is going to say, okay, here's the idea, a concept of an age bridge. How can we make this thing comfortable for us? Or how can we make it more useful? So there are devices being invented to uh, accomplish just that. So we don't have to operate the switches all the time. So uh, even the switches can be operated based on some conditions. So the humans are even not involved in the operation. That's the idea. Right. Uh, so, me, sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, sir, what was the operation for the shoot through again? Sorry. What was the operation for the shoot through again? Yeah, shoot through is not an operation. Okay, shoot through is a condition that we don't want to have. Right? Okay, is that the no. like, for example, the switch one and switch two is closed? Yeah. So let me draw this thing again here. Here's a switch, and here's another switch here, and then there's another switch here, and then there's another switch here, and then there's a power supply, there's a supplied voltage, and here is a ground, All right? If we now see the wires now, if you have a motor here going, yep. all right? Uh, if we close this one and that one, the motor is going to take some energy, is going to provide some resistance, some current is going to be limited. So there's, the, the, there's no direct pathway. So it's going, the electricity is going to pass through the motor, it's going to employ that, the energy is going to be changed into a mechanical energy, which is basically a motor spinning. But if you just have that and that, you just have a wire connecting. Right. Um, then that will be the shoot through, right? That's, that's the shoot through condition. Right, so so either this. You. Yeah, and, or that. Okay. All right. So yeah. Thank you. So it's a condition. It's not a part of the operation. It's something that you don't want to have. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. All right. 
we are almost where we want to be. Okay. Um, now we're going to explain to you something that's called the duty cycle because we're dealing with the DC motor. And uh, I think I already posted the lecture notes. The only, the, the, the one is one useful link is that the operation of a DC motor, how it operates. Basically you apply DC voltage to a DC motor. You're going to make it spin. You're going to apply more voltage. It's going to spin faster or stronger. You apply less, it's going to spin slower or not as strong. I don't want to say weaker, okay? Uh, so that's how we control the DC motor. Now, <clears throat> uh, you can do it two ways. You can have a rheostat, which is a, a controlled resistor, a variable resistor, in series with the DC, uh, which is going to either limit the current more or limit the current less. If it limits the current less, that goes through the motor. Of course, the motor is going to have more energy delivered to it. It's going to spin faster or stronger. And then if you crank up this, so increase the resistance of the resistor, you're going to limit the current more. Uh, that means the, the motor is not going to get as much energy per moment and is going to spin uh, slower or, uh, or the momentum is going to be weaker, the weaker torque, okay? Uh, so, <clears throat> You can accomplish it that way, or you can accomplish it the other way. And I'm going to show you the other way. Let's say you have X and Y axes here, right? So this is going to be represented with time. And over here, we're going to have voltage. Always label the axes. And we're going to assume that this is zero volts. Okay. And so we have maybe five volts here. Let's say we have 10 volts here. Notice that after I labeled the axes, then I don't need to put units here. If I didn't label the axes, I will have to put units here, but usually that's how it's done. Okay. So this is voltage versus time. If it was time versus voltage, the voltage will be on the bottom. So that's how the, that's the language that we're on. So the voltage versus time. Right okay. now, when we have a complete line here, that means we have a constant voltage, constant current, DC, direct current. This thing doesn't change. Okay. No problem. All you have to do is raise this or lower that. And if that voltage is applied to the DC motor, we're going to accomplish what we were talking about. Right? But let's say we're going to have um, something else happening here. We're going to get a frequency happening. Come on. There's a frequency happen, right? Sometimes this uh, uh, power supply is on and sometimes it goes to zero and it goes here and it's on and it goes to zero and so on. Can we accomplish the time, the period of that? Well, the period is where the waveform starts to repeat. So let's say from here, uh, and it repeats right here. Okay, so that's the time here, that's the period. That's the big T. Let's say that uh, this T equals uh, over here 10 milliseconds. Notice I'm putting the units in square brackets. Get into a habit of doing that, make things nice and neat. It's going to make life a lot easier for you when you do more complicated uh, calculations and things. So from here to here is 10 milliseconds. And if that distance and that distance are equal, of course, that's gonna be something like five milliseconds here. So in this case, 
this uh, voltage is half of the time on and half of the time off. Mm, we're getting somewhere here now. Because now we have a five volt power supply, but it's half time on, half time off, half time on, half time off, equal amounts of time. Well, what would be the equivalent DC voltage that we're going to get out of that? Right? Well, we're going to look at the, something that's called the duty cycle. What's the duty cycle of this whole period? The duty cycle is from when this waveform is on. All right, so here's the duty cycle. Right, right on my forehead. Right. Now, when you have the duty cycle 50% on, 50% on, 50% off, then you can say that your duty cycle is 50%. Simple, eh? Now, let's say this whole thing is uh, one unit, right? One of whatever, okay? Unitless, one, just a number. If you have a 50% duty cycle, so you're going to have something like, uh, what's the whole duty cycle 50%? Because this is 100%, this is a 50%. So that 50% is your multiplier, or 50% is half, which is like 0 0.5. Over here, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, two 0 0.5s give you 1.0, <laughs> right? So here's your multiplier. Right. Your multiplier is going to be 0 0.5. So if you have five volts of the maximum power supply, and you determined that your duty cycle is 50%, which is basically half of that, your multiplier is 0 0.5, what is the equivalent voltage that is coming out of the power terminals? It's going to be half of whatever it is supplied, which is going to be 2.5 volts. So instead of having a constant DC and having a potentiometer or a variable resistor or rheostat cranking the voltage down, you can adjust the final voltage that is getting into the motor by keeping the voltage not changed, but you're going to turn it, you're going to use the different duty cycle, right? So if you have a 25% duty cycle, if you're going to turn it on just a little bit, then that 2.5 volts is going to drop into a half again. If you have, well, let's say it's going to be easier if you have the power supplied 10 volts, right? And if you have 30% duty cycle, if it's just on for 30% of the time, then of course the equivalent voltage is going to be three volts which means it's, the motor is going to spin as if a constant voltage supply of three volts was applied to it, right? So this is, this is something that is called a pulse width modulation because you are applying pulses and the pulse applies to the whole width of the whole period, you just, regulating how much you're going to give. If you have 100% on, then yeah, the pulse width would be 100%. The duty cycle is 50%, the pulse width is 50% of the whole period, okay? So you're just adjusting the width of the pulses within the period yeah, uh, to accomplish different equivalent DC voltage coming out of that, whatever the power supply is. Um, this is this in this is in respect um, to the H bridge or the DC motor. No, I'm just I'm just uh, I'm just um, I gave you the operation of how the components are going to work. Now I'm giving the idea of something that is called 
P W M pulse width modulation. How wide is the pulse? All right. So we can adjust the frequency of the pulses or the length of not the frequency of the pulse because the frequency is determined by the by the period here so we're not changing the frequency we are just adjusting of how long the each pulse is going to last with reference to the whole period okay so that's why we're calling the pulse width modulation how wide the pulse is compared to the whole period that's the idea and by adjusting the pole width, pulse width modulation, we can adjust the equivalent voltage that is going to be applied to the motor. Now, how does that apply? How does that apply to the age bridge? You may ask. Mr. Ba. Hello. Can I, can I interrupt you for a second? Yes. Uh, we have our DC course starting in, in about two minutes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue uh, for about maybe 15, 20 more minutes, not that much. And I'm going to give you the link to the rest of it, the whole thing on YouTube. Um, and you can just, uh, at your own time, you can just come and continue with that. Is, is, is that good for you? Yes. Sir. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Thank so you, uh, you're welcome. And thank you very much. And uh, Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you. And so I'll see you when I see you then. All right, cool guys. Uh, I'm just gonna keep talking to myself here, <laughs> but you're gonna watch it later, all right? So we have, uh, how does that apply to the age bridge? Well, if you have a um, age bridge with a, here's a motor. All right, here's a, here's a couple of switches. Yeah. And here and over here, and here's the power supplied, and here is the ground. Okay, so let's say this is the positive uh, side, this is the ground, and we're going to close this switch, and we're going to close this switch. Here's a positive. And here's negative side, so there's a, this side is going to get positive, this side is going to get negative of the motor, electricity is going to flow through that. If you go and apply cons constant uh, voltage to this point here, so here's the current path going, then the motor is going to turn accordingly um, as if that voltage was applied. But if you apply, let's say that's 10, we're applying 10 volts, 10 volts, constant, constant current, um, constant. 10 volts, constant, right? Which means that the duty cycle, cycle equals 100%. Then the motor is going to behave as if 10 volts was applied to it. Okay. Now, if we have something like uh, this here, here's 10 volts, and let's say the frequency or the time is 10 milliseconds here, uh, here, 10 milliseconds. Here's the voltage, here's the time. Right, 10 milliseconds, and over here is five. So if we apply half time on, half time off, then the equivalent, the duty cycle is 50% because we have half time on, half time off. So the duty cycle is going to be 50%, which means uh, that translates into 0 0.5 of a multiplier, which means it's going to have 10 volts multiplied by half. 10 times 0 0.5 equals 5, which means um, uh, that this motor is going to behave as if 5 volts were applied to it. Okay? So by supplying the voltage in PWM way, right, we're, we're, we can control the speed of the motor or the torque as well. Because 
they, they go together. Okay. All right, so now we have that. Okay. Now, if we have the other switches, it's going to behave same as that, uh, but uh, it's going to turn the other way. So I don't need to explain that, right? So we have the idea of how the components work, and we have the idea of um, the pulse width modulation. Now, let's piece that all together. Because the, the device that you're going to use is called L298 motor driver or L298 driver, period. The L298 driver employs L298, uh, L298 um, integrated circuit in order to make this work. So um, let's just uh, get into that a little bit. I apologize for the focus. I think this, my camera just went out of focus and it just stayed that way. All right, so the L298 looks like this. Right. Just gonna make it a little bit. All right, so that's L298 motor driver, okay? L298. Edge bridge driver. Get rid of this. L two ninety eight. Wow, can't see that here in the picture in picture. Let's do it again. All right, it's gonna go from here to here. All right, L two ninety. Eight, all right, or L two ninety eight N. So the L two ninety eight N is the integrated circuit. L two ninety eight model uh, edge bridge driver is the whole board, right? The one that is I'm pointing to it right now. Yeah, yeah, that one there. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so that's what it looks like. So this is the whole L298. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this here so that I'm going to bring up the L298 um, integrated circuit. So that here, this, uh, this, this whole thing, this is the chip, okay? Integrated circuit. It's this thing right here. Uh, let me just uh, see if I can highlight that. That's this thing right here. Right, that's the one. Control Z. Okay, so that's this thing here. All the other stuff around it is a paraphernalia to make our lives easier when we try to connect to things. Can you do this whole lab that you're going to do, uh, which the age bridge motor driver involving the Arduino board uh, as a microcontroller? to control this driver board. Could you do that with just having that in your parts, in your bag? Yes, you could, but it would take you longer. And it's just not very practical because everything else that you have here, you would have to put that in your breadboard, all the other parts that are there. But now everything is mounted on the printed circuit board just for us to use it easily. Okay, so we're going to analyze this part here only for the beginning, okay? For the beginning of things. All right, so I'm gonna switch screens. So that's the part here. Now we have something uh, right off the bat, if I can show you this. Remember when we had a VCC that applied to the power that applies all the circuits that involve transistors and C stands for collector. So that's uh, the VCC applies, is applied to all the collectors, all the transistors, uh, and usually the collectors are closer to the power. So that's why 
the terminology state as VCC. But what do we have here? We have something that's called VSS. Oh, yeah. If you, that's uh, that's the printout of your uh, um, assignment here. Notice you're going to see something that's called VSS. That's because the this particular chip uses a transistor, but it's a different type of a transistor. Yeah. Transistor has emitter, oh, sorry, uh, collector, base, and emitter. Collector on the top, all right. And uh, this is a different type of a transistor-like device. It works this, almost the same way, but different because if you look deep into it, transistors are being controlled by the current and something that's called a MOSFET, M-O-S-F-E-T, yeah. MOSFET. MOSFETs are consisting of source, um, uh, source, drain, and oh man, I'm, uh, I'm losing it today. Um, and gate, yeah. right? Gate is like the base, source is like the uh, collector in a transistor. And what's the third one? <laughs> drain is just like the emitter. For the MOSFETs, but and these are these devices like right here. They look like transistors, right? But I wanted to show you the way how transistor is operating. This MOSFET here operates the same way. Uh, it's being used as a switch right here. So here's one, here's one, here's one. And here's one. Oh, there's four more here. Here, here, and here, and here. Okay. All right. So this is the whole power supplied. That's why we call it VSS because uh, it uh, refers to the source part of the MOSFET. Okay. You can also see the uh, capacitors being right at the right at the power supply here. And here is the VS for the V source. Right. Uh, so there's another power being supplied. So that actually here's the V source is being supplied to all the sources here. And then this VSS, that's a reference. So this here's the more main and here's the less main, if you want to call it that way. Um, there are different, uh, different power supplies that are being applied. One, uh, the reason for that is one uh, one uh, terminal is using the power to apply power to operate the chip, and the other uh, power is the other terminal is to provide a logic level signal to it. Okay. Uh, to the uh, it's just like you are using the TTL devices, the TTL gates, uh, you have to provide uh, ground. Uh, connect the ground, which is pin seven usually, uh, to the ground. And if it's a 14 pin chip, the last 14th pin is going to be collected to the VCC. That means you're turning that chip on. And uh, only then you can use, you can operate the chip by applying the uh, signal to it, uh, the logic levels. Yeah. So what do we have here is uh, outputs, output one. And output two. Yeah. This is where the motor is going to be connected. All right. Yeah. yeah. That's where the motor is going to be connected. And it's capable of controlling two motors. Right? But we're going to concentrate only on one side of that. The other side works the same. All right. So now. What do we have here? What kind of pins do we have? We have input one and input two. And we have the enable pin. How does that work here? Well, if you just think about it, if you apply logic level one, which will be five volts, logic level one to the enable pin, 
where are, where is this thing connected? It goes to here and it goes to here. It's going to be applied here. It's also continuing and it's going to go, apply to this end gate right here. Where does it continue? Oh, it goes, keeps going this way and it's going to be applied to one of the pins of the other end gate, uh, well, end gate with the inverted, one of the inputs inverted. And it's going to continue and it's going to be applied to the, one of the pins of the other gate. So here we have four end gates, one, two, three, and four. All right. What, that, what does, does this accomplish? If you have that logic one on the enable pin, that means whatever you do to the other pin is going to make the gate operate as you are, as you want it to, right? So if you have the gate enabled, that means it is going to make difference what you're going to do with the other pin of the gate. If that thing is not one, no matter what you do to the other pin, it's going to make a no difference because end gate has to have both inputs on for that thing to have uh, logic level one, all right, uh, on the output. Okay, so that means that this, the enable pin is enabled logic one. I'm going to give one condition only because then you're going to have to fill out the rest of the assignment here. So let's see which condition could I use. Um, uh, well, I'm just going to analyze the path, and then you're going to have to read. You're going to have to read this. Yeah. You're going to have to read your assignment here, okay? Um, in order to make sense out of that. I noticed some people already did that. Uh, we're running out of time. 15 more minutes um, for this whole thing to shut down on me. This is this. Okay, someone is still here. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, yes, this is the circle of the motor. So that's the, this, you're talking about this one here, this, this circle here. That's the motor, right? So what happens uh, when we apply a uh, signal to this? Right. Let's say we're going to have, I'm just gonna pick one. We're going to apply one here and zero here. What is, what that, what is this going to give us? Right. Uh, what's going to give us, okay, so we have one here, we continue. All right, I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. We continue with this one, but now here's, this is this input is inverted. There's a bubble here. So that's going to turn it into zero. I'm just gonna have, I'm just gonna go like that. And this is going to be one. So we're going to have zero here. which means this transistor or this MOSFET, this device, whatever that is, it's, it's a MOSFET, it's going to act like an open switch. So that thing is not abled. What switch do we have here? Here's one still, it also continues this way, see that? And over here, so we're going to have one here and one here. What does that give us? That gives us one on the output, which means it's going to turn that on. So it's just like having a closed switch right here. All right. Okay. Now we continue with the other. So we have taken care of this terminal. It doesn't go anywhere else. Okay, it just goes uh, just like that. Okay. Now the other terminal here, input number two, where does it go? It goes this way, goes this way, goes this way, goes this way, crosses that wire, doesn't touch it and it goes into that here and it hits that gate, but this is zero. So we're going to have one here because there's a bubble here. So already have one here. So that zero is going to be turned into one because there's a bubble. Right. So here's a one and one. Oh, look, we got one on the output here, which means this is going to be shorted because it's just a close, just like, closing the switch, all right? Well, what do we have? 
uh, under this condition. Here we have the V supplied. What's the pathway? Let me go change the color. I'm just going to change the color of this of my pen here. So we could. Uh, I'm going to choose red, sort of reddish color here. All right. So from the power supply, it is going to go this way here. It's going to go this way here through this wire. Now not going to here because that's open but here is a continuous pathway because that switch is closed okay that is open so it's going to go this way and it's going to hit the motor it's going to go through the motor and it's going to go this way here and it's going to find its way through this switch and it's going to go into the ground way here's a resistor and there's a sense output. So if you connect something, because it's a resistor, it's a current flow, it's going to create a little bit of voltage. That's just going to show you that this thing is operating. So that's one way of analyzing this system here. I showed you how to look at that. You might have to print a few of those or use a really good pencil and really good eraser in order to analyze the circuit and complete the assignment that you have uh, to complete. Okay, and you have a week uh, to do this. Right? So this is the part. Now, of course, if you have zero here, if you do a zero here, then all everything is disabled. Nothing is going to work. Right? Now, if you carefully read the assignment instructions, using this way of analyzing, you should have no problem coming up with all the conditions that you're being asked to uh, to come up. Now, this whole this whole piece of equipment here right, is let me change the color back again to something that can be seen that's that is this device right here right? and it has pins right? now what are the pins on the whole printed circuit board all right so here is output number two, and here's output number one. No, sorry, output number one and two. So that's the first output, output number three and four. Oh, look, uh, here's uh, one output right here. All right, here's the other output right here. One and two, output three and four. All right. So these are those outputs, this one here and this one here. And depending on how the voltage applies on the on to these terminals, is going. This is where you connect the motor. That's where the motor gets connected. Okay, here, All right here, symbol of the motor, and it goes one goes to here, and one goes to here. Actually, right right here. These are screw terminals. Okay. And then uh, this is going to operate the motor. Same thing on the other side, right here. Now we have the VCC, Do you see that? Uh, there's a little bit of inconsistency because on, um, on here, we're using VSS and VS, and over here is going to be VCC and uh, V logical input here uh, somewhere there. Um, you have VCC, and here are the, well, here are the logical inputs right here. They go right into this, these pins right there. Yeah. Now, uh, so we have analyzed this. How do we power up this whole board? We uh, we power up this board. Where's my mouse? I can see my mouse. Come on. Oh, yeah. There's my mouse. Uh, we are going to apply voltage right here and to the ground. Right. So that's going to be the big 12 volts, I think. Something like anywhere 12, to, uh, around 12, 10, 12 volts, maybe 10 volts. That's going to be the supply power, the power supply, this. That's the, that's the power supply that's going to make the whole board operate. 
Then we have something that says five volts. We don't supply five volts here. We make that operate. So here's a jumper. If you put this jumper in, that means that one, there's one pin and there's another pin. You're joining them together. And there is this voltage regulator here that is going to give us five volts output on this pin. You can use this pin to power up other devices, but it also is going to make this five volt appear here and this five volt appear here. Okay. And it's going to light up this LED. Where is my mouse again? This LED right here is going to light up when that jumper is in and the power is supplied here. Right. Yeah, plus, and here will be the negative side of the power supply. Okay. So that's uh, that takes care of this. Uh, now, um, here is the enable, enable pin right here. And that thing goes and it is connected right into this little pin that sticks out right here, right here. That's the enable. There's another enable that's going to enable the second half, the other half of the whole circuit because we can control two motors with this. So because there's a five volt applied here and five volt applied here, there are a couple more jumpers. You put this jumper in here, you put this jumper in. That means the whole board is enabled. All these gates right here, all these gates here, uh, that's just like enabling the whole chip. That's enable A and here's enable B. Okay. So, um, six minutes. All right. Uh, then we have the input one and input two, input three and input four. Um, when we apply voltage to those inputs right here and right here, we're going to, so if both of them are accordingly applied, we're going to make the motor spin one way or the other on one side or the motor spin one way or the other on the other side, depending on whether we apply the logic level to this or that, uh, this here or that right here, okay? Where do we apply, where does the PWM come in? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to tie, we're going to take those jumpers off, these two jumpers, we're going to take them off. We're going to apply the logic level in a certain way, and you have to read the specifications here. I'm going to leave it up to you to find out what do you have to apply and which pins to make the motor spin one way or the other. Right? And then if you apply constant voltage, constant logic voltage, because everything works on the five volts. That's why the whole thing is built on the printed circuit board. So we can just apply the five volts here and five volts there in certain ways. So when you apply, the pole, the constant voltage to the enable, then we're going to have the motor spin full speed one way or the other, right? depending on how the logic is uh, created, whether you have one or zero on this one here, or one or zero or this one here. Okay. Now, if you apply PWM, pulse, with modulated signal into the enable pin, then we can enable the motor accordingly for a certain amount of time and disable that for a certain amount of time. 
and enable it again and disable. So it's going to provide the power and cut the power off. Provide the power, cut the power off. Provide the power, cut the power off. But it's not going to make the motor stop. So it's going to be provide the power, freewheeling. Provide the power, freewheeling. Provide the power, freewheeling. Yeah? Depending on how the pulse width modulation, the duty cycle of those pulses, it's the dumbest ring I've ever heard. It's pro it, the, 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 when, uh, uh, when, depending on the width of those pulses, um, then we're going to accomplish the equivalent DC voltage on the output over here, on the output of this, where's my mouse? Over here, on the output here. And depending on what the supplied voltage is, we're going to multiply that by the multiplier that we're going to accomplish by calculating the duty cycle. And that's how we're going to accomplish the DC voltage equivalent of the DC voltage that is applied to the DC motor. So that's what, it, now you can use this thing as a free board just on its own. But if you just use the five volts, you're going to make be able to spin, make the motor spin one way or the other at full speed. Or you also have something that's called the Arduino microcontroller. And the microcontroller is a board that has a microprocessor mounted on it with all the paraphernalia to, uh, around it in order to make this thing as a microcontroller board. Okay? So that's the Arduino. Okay, so here is the uh, H-bridge driver. We, conf uh, we co uh, covered the H-bridge driver and the pulse width modulation. That was the main topic. Everything else I gave you is just to make you see how, make you understand how the other thing is uh, working. We have a few seconds because it's going to cut me off. I said it for an hour and a half. I should have said it for two hours. Just give me the more minute or two. All right, so that's the end of uh, this, uh, this uh, week uh, eight lesson here. Thank you very much, and I'll see you when I see you.